So I was going through the stats on the Shiloh in the City blog. Oh, if you don't already know, I have a website with the same name as this channel where I have over a hundred articles on New York City history, culture, and things to do. So like this, but written out and more pictures. Anyway, I was looking at the stats on the website and lately quite a few people have been checking out my review of Little Island from when it first opened last summer. So I thought it would be fun for us to review the review to see if it still holds up a year later. Because since I wrote the review in July of 2021, I visited the little island a few more times since then, most recently last weekend. So let's see if my first impressions of little island are still valid. All right, so I got the review right here and let's begin. So I apologize if this sounds a little rambly, a little off the cuff, because it is. I'm gonna be reading this article to you and reacting to it in real time. So it's gonna be a little unpolished, but I hope you can still understand the points that I'm trying to make. So, is NYC's Little Island overrated? An honest review. A little over a month ago, local news outlets were heralding the opening and influencers, and I already messed up reading within the first sentence. Let's start over. A little over a month ago, local news outlets were heralding its opening and influencers were coming out in droves ready to pose and post. But it appears that visitors are already a little disenchanted with Little Island, New York City's newest park. Funded largely by multi-billionaire Barry Diller and his wife, fashion designer Diane von Furstenberg, this brainchild of Thomas Hederwick, the architect behind Vessel, and the landscape architect Signe Nelson, I think that's how you say her name, uh, aims to provide New Yorkers with an escape from Manhattan, presumably on the back of a white concrete amoeba. Diller describes Little Island's goals in interior terms, expressing that he was going for a space that on first sight was dazzling and upon use made people happy. I think he got half of that so far. He got half of that, right? Uh, we're going to discuss the other half later. With thousands of people still heading to the island over a month after its opening, one would think that they had succeeded with that vision. But online forums tell a different story. So that's actually what inspired this article. I wasn't really gonna write about Little Island. I didn't really care about its opening, <laughs> but then I saw what people were saying online and that set me off for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> it just got in my feelings about what people were saying about Little Island. I didn't feel like they were giving it a fair chance. Like there were posts like this one here that said, went to Little Island, not worth it, crowded even during the week. We ended up visiting the High Line a few blocks away. And that's fine. That's fair. But it's what the comments under it were saying that set me off. Like they're, the person that directly commented under it said, I figured that. I heard you can walk through it in 20 minutes. And something about people saying that you can get through this in 20 minutes just pissed me off. I'm like, it's a park. You're not supposed to get through it in 20 minutes. You're supposed to sit and you're supposed to chill. It's a park. It's not a, it's not an activity per se. So that's what inspired me writing this because I just wanted to respond to the people who didn't get the point. <laughs> but yes, uh, recently I've come across a couple of threads on popular New York City Facebook act. Well, I'm sorry, popular New York City activities Facebook groups that have departed from the usual Little Island Love Fest in the media. The common sentiment from the Threads commentators is that Little Island is overrated and it doesn't have enough for visitors to do. Several noted that they walked through the whole thing in an unremarkable 20 minutes, not, not enough time to make the journey to the flanks of the meatpacking district worth it for them. Now everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but some opinions make me wonder if those people have spent so much time watching those spinning thingamajigs at Little Island that their brains have turned into mush. I'm joking about that. Please don't come for me. Yo, always afraid of being canceled, right? But I do believe that the people who think Little Island is overrated are missing the point. <sighs> These days, I don't think they're entirely wrong. I, I still do think like it's not supposed to be something that you get through in 20 minutes. Like that's not, that's not the point of it, but the parts what Little Island is supposed to stand for 
it doesn't do it well, at least not well enough. And I'll, I'll get into that and think in the next, in the next paragraph, I'll get into that. So, Lil Island has all the elements that make a small park enjoyable. It's modern yet charming, like Alice in Wonderland meets The Hobbit. It has mini wildflower gardens and manicured lawns with hills perfect for you to roll down. It has selfie bait views of lower Manhattan and New Jersey, if you're into that. It has places to sit, places to stroll, intimate performance stages, and overpriced food trucks. Heck, it even has bathrooms. It's its own quirky ecosystem. So I want to go through each of those elements that I just said in that paragraph. Because a year later, there are things that... I have a critique about it a year later, each, each of those items. Because overall, those things do make a small park enjoyable. But Little Island doesn't have enough of these elements. I'll explain. Okay, so let's go through modern yet charming. Definitely has that, like Alice in Wonderland meets The Hobbit. I definitely still think that a year later. Sorry, I have cat fur on my lips because I have a cat. <laughs> A very furry cat um so yeah definitely definitely charming definitely cute it's quirky it has those concrete uh petals i think that's what they call it and that's cool um what's next mini wildflower gardens has that still um and that's also pretty manicured lawns with hills perfect for you to roll down The lawns exist, but you can't use them. And I, that part bothers me. Cause I I get that if you walk up and down a lawn, especially with the amount of people that Little Island sees, that lawn is gonna turn to crap very quickly. But they build Little Island as a park. They didn't build it as a garden. A park, you assume that you can walk on the grass and play and all that stuff. A garden, you'd expect you can't walk on the lawns. So to have such a big part of the island just blocked off from people being able to use it, you can't sit on it, you can't get close to it, it's just for show and it, it's, it just renders most of the park unusable. Um, let's see what's next. Selfie bait views of lower Manhattan and New Jersey. Kind of. <laughs> It's not the greatest views. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's it's nice. Lower Manhattan is you, it has a decent view of it in the distance. New Jersey is New Jersey, <laughs> but the views are okay. Like I wouldn't go there just for the views. Um, places to sit. Not enough. Not enough places to sit. That's one of my biggest critiques of Little Island is that there are not enough places to sit. Like they have these cute little wooden benches interspersed throughout, but they're tiny. They're like there's just one seaters and uh, I'm sorry, my face is itchy. Um they don't have enough of them. It doesn't there there maybe there's like a handful of those. The other places where you could sit in the park are those folding chairs that are by the food um, the food trucks. And I didn't come to the meatpacking district just to sit in a folding chair. And besides that, the places where you could sit are just, they're directly in the sun. Like some of the folding chairs have a little canopy over them to block the sun, but I didn't come for here for that. Like that's not part of the vibe that I wanted to sit in a folding chair in the sun. Nah, if I'm on Little Island, I want to feel like I'm immersed in Little Island, sitting on the quirky brown benches, but there's there's not enough of that. Yes, there's also, you can sit in the amphitheater, but that's also directly in the sun. So it's not comfortable, you're not going to want to stay a while. It's just not enough seating, and not enough trees to protect that seating. Um, places to stroll definitely has that gosh it's, it's kind of all you all that's all really people really do at little island is like sit on the folding chairs in the sun and then 
go up and up and up the stairs. You're just going around and around the stairs and there's not really a payoff for that. Like, you don't really see why you're going around on these stairs. It's just, you're just following this conveyor belt of people who are just going up and up and up. That's, that's a, it's a meh experience. Uh, let's see, intimate performing stages. That's one thing that they did right. The Little Island does a lot of programming, and I gotta commend them for that. Especially in the summer, you got people coming out multiple times a week. Like, I think today, Seth Meyers is coming out. It's like Seth Meyers and Friends. That's what it's billed as. And they have music performances. They have drama, all sorts of stuff. They're doing that right. I appreciate that. That's a lot of fun. That's one thing that they did right. Right. Um, let's see. Overpriced food trucks. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's not just the price. It's the taste. Mm -mm. If I'm paying that much for, like, we paid, so we were there last weekend, and we paid $7, I think, for a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. It wasn't even good. It was bland. Ugh. But you got to eat it because you paid $7 for that. But don't, if you go there, do not get the food. Bring your own food. Don't get the food there. <laughs> Ooh, tr trust me, don't do that. Okay, heck, it even has its even has bathrooms. It does, and I appreciate that. Those are nice, quirky, clean bathrooms, top notch. Let's see, it's own quirky ecosystem. It is. It's a quirky ecosystem, not not a perfect ecosystem. It's just overall, the things that it should be doing well it doesn't have enough of like it's a great start but for the amount of people that go to little island it's not enough anyway let's keep going yeah i don't blame people for not enjoying their time there i've been to little island twice so far now it's like i don't know five six times and i didn't get that much from the experience still not getting that much from the experience every time i go I don't get that much from the experience. And I don't know why I keep going. <laughs> I just keep going hoping each time it's gonna be different. And it's not. But I keep going in the summer. So maybe I should go in the fall, the winter, early spring. Maybe it'll be a different experience. If you've been there in a season other than summer, let me know how that was. Maybe it's a completely different experience in uh, in those other seasons because summer even early in the morning midday afternoon same experience not really worth it to me so I, I would like to hear a different perspective okay so it wasn't because I thought Little Island was boring or overrated it's because Little Island is overcrowded it's it's still pretty pretty crowded the 2.4 acre park has a capacity of a thousand people at a time and boy, does it feel like they push the limits on that. Little Island is meant to be this dreamy place, but even the dreamiest place becomes a nightmare when you feel like you've been forced onto the moving conveyor belt of people. Still true. It's not as bad as it was when it first opened, but you definitely still feel like you're on a moving conveyor, conveyor belt of people that you have to keep moving and you can't really take the island in. Um, that setup is more fitting for an airport or an amusement park, not for a park that aims to give visitors an immersive experience and a sense of escape. Unless by sense of escape, they mean, by, they mean constantly trying to escape the people ahead of and behind you. Still true. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have much hope that this conveyor belt experience will change anytime soon. Hasn't. <laughs> right now, the people packing the park are mostly New Yorkers. Can you imagine the sardine tin Little Island will become once tourism is back in full swing? The meatpacking district is already a tourist hotspot because of the High Line, so building Little Island in the same area may not have been the wisest location choice. I still stand by that. I don't think that that was the greatest location for them to do it. I still think it would have been greater like uptown or in a different borough. 
but it's not my money. So I got, got to take that up with Barry Diller. <laughs> If you want to attempt to have the kind of experience where you can properly immerse yourself in Little Island, perhaps wait until the summer is over or try visiting the park at the crack of dawn. Maybe then you'll be free to get lost in Little Island's world of whimsy without wishing that the people around you would just get lost. I think that's true still, and I need to take my own advice and <laughs> visit it at a different time because in the summer or like in regular business hours <laughs> between like nine to five little island is not fun but it might be at a different time in the meantime i can think of a couple better conversations that we can have about little island rather than debating whether or not it's overrated for instance do you think little island debuted at the wrong time would this have been better received when the city was in lockdown and what about the location would it have been better to put a park like this in another area of the city that isn't as affluent or that doesn't, has a, doesn't have a much access to green space? Or can we talk about the pros and cons of using private funding for a major public project like Little Island? I'm looking forward to hearing your opinions in the comment section. We still need to have those conversations. Um, I don't think we had enough of those conversations. I still think they're wordier topics. <laughs> and is Little Island overrated or not. But in terms of you deciding whether or not you should visit, <sighs> like if you're in the area and you're curious, then go. But I wouldn't go out of my way to go all the way to Little Island, even though I keep doing it. <laughs> like an addict, I just keep doing it, even though I know it's not good for me. But yeah, if you don't have to go, then don't go. <laughs> there are better parks, unfortunately. I'm sorry. And like, I'm a fan of Thomas Hederwick's work and I really wanted to like Little Island, but oh, there's so much room for improvement. So those are my thoughts. That's my review of my old review a year later if you've been to little island let me know what you think about it if you haven't been there let me know if you would still go there and thank you for watching oh and before you go make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel check out my blog with my over 100 articles on things to do in new york and its history and culture yada 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 it's all cool all fun all there for you and uh, follow me on social media where I post New York City tips daily. And yeah, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Bye.